The concentration on saying that little sentence. Okay, let's go. Finding an accountant, finding a broker. Do you buy in your own name or do you use a trust? There are so many things that first time investors must contend with and decide on. And with so much competing information out in the world, it can be an overwhelming task. Working on your educational readiness and understanding what you are embarking on is just as important as having the money to back you up. Hi, Malika here from The Property Mentors. Whether it's sourcing the right experts or choosing the right strategy for your first investment purchase, today we're gonna look at some more answers to the top first-time investor questions we hear all the time here at The Property Mentors. One of the key advantages to setting up a self-managed super fund, also known as an SMSF, is that you can decide where your super is invested. This differs from a retail fund where a fund manager is making those decisions on your behalf. If you're passionate about property, you can even choose investment properties as your SMSF strategy. There are some important rules that you must follow. One of the most important is that you can't purchase a property to be lived in or rented by you, anyone else invested in the SMSF or your relatives. It's not a holiday home or a cheap rental for you to take advantage of. It's an asset that should appreciate in value and be able to generate income for your retirement. As well as setting up the fund, some additional considerations should be discussed with your financial advisor or accountant. These can include leaving a buffer in the SMSF to pay for ongoing expenses like maintenance and repairs of your property. If you are borrowing the loan to value ratio, it is also genuinely higher for an SMSF, so you may need a larger deposit. Interest rates can also be a little higher in the SMSF as well. These are just some of the things to consider when it comes to opening up an SMSF. Having a conversation with your accountant or financial planner will provide you with the advice you need to make an informed choice about this strategy if it's right for you. While your age, income and savings will impact where you can start and what strategies you use, it's still possible to get onto the property ladder or improve your position if you have the access to the correct advice. You might even be surprised at some of the advanced strategies you could try. Whether it's exploring options like trusts and SMSF, small-scale private offerings or peer-to-peer -peer lending, there are options that can help you build a deposit, improve cash flow, accelerate your savings or shorten the time to your next investment. Many of these alternative investment strategies also have the benefit of being undertaken by or with the help of professional investors. These industry experts will not only help ensure that your investment is handled appropriately, but they can also be a great source of knowledge as you grow into the investor that you really want to be. Property investment strategies that don't involve buying property can also provide you with more short and medium term benefits that your traditional buy and hold strategy just can't. Earning interest is an important part of reaching a savings goal, but maybe you could be making more. This is where strategies such as peer-to-peer -peer lending can help you invest your funds into property projects and achieve a better interest rate than standard offset or saving accounts. To maximize your rental income, you need to stay up to date with local market conditions and comparable properties in the area. One of your best sources of this information will be your property manager. Having the right people managing your investment will ensure that it's not only being looked after appropriately, but making you the money it's supposed to be. In a strong market, you might achieve a higher rent, but when the lease expires or the tenant vacates, if the market has cooled, then your property risks sitting vacant if you don't adjust expectations. Getting the highest rent in the area is not always the best strategy if it means weeks of missed rental income while your property sits vacant. In many circumstances, by adjusting your rent expectations, you're more likely to secure a tenant quickly and you'll often have a choice of more appropriate tenants. Alternatively, a quick renovation can also attract tenants faster and produce a higher rental income. Newer properties rent for more because tenants will pay a small premium to live in something nicer. This could mean suitable heating, air conditioning, dishwashers, quality fittings and showers, toilets and taps that don't leak, 
Tenants looking to rent for longer periods will also prioritise these creature comforts in their search. At the end of the day, if your property is well maintained and the rent is set correctly, you should receive multiple quality applications and have a choice of tenants that will care for your investment as their new home. Short stay accommodation can be a great strategy to increase rental yield, with many investors building a successful cash flow portfolio this way. However, one of the biggest risks with a short stay strategy is cash flow inconsistency and demand. You'll need a financial buffer to get you through low booking periods. Revolving guests can cause damage to your property and insurances can be more expensive. You will also need to think about the time involved in managing the property yourself versus engaging a professional to manage the process for you. Short stay properties can require much more attention than their long-term counterparts. There are many professional companies out there that are experts in analyzing cash flow, occupancy rates, pricing strategy, cleaning services, and of course, guest services when it comes to short stay accommodation. If you're serious about using short stay to increase yields on your investment property, it is worth mitigating some of that risk by using a professional management company to manage all of that hassle for you. If you have more than one property, a property in another state, a difficult tenant, if you're not sure about how to raise the rent, if you need to find a new tenant quickly, or if you simply just want to ensure the overall success of your portfolio, then you're going to want a top-notch property manager. So how do you find a good one? Here's some of our quick tips. Shop around and arrange rental appraisals for your property with multiple companies. This should be free. Find out about how many properties they look after. The fewer they have, the more time they can dedicate to your property. Do they conduct property inspections personally? Or do they outsource it? And how often will they attend your property? How detailed will their inspections be? Will you get a short email saying everything is fine? Or will you get a report with hundreds of photos? You can also check their Google reviews and see whether their current investors and tenants are happy with their services. One of the most important tips when it comes to choosing a property manager for your half a million dollar plus investment property is that you get what you pay for. If you make the decision to go for an inexperienced, overworked, but cheaper property manager, expect an experience and cut corners. Often the difference in percentages quoted by property managers can work out to the cost of a cup of coffee each week. So make sure you are choosing their service on value, not pricing. So I hope these answers have clarified some common property investment questions for you, and you're feeling more confident to dive into your first investment. If you'd like to take your first steps into property investment, check out the links below to speak with a property mentor and see how we can help you with your first property purchase. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more from us here at The Property Mentors. And check out our weekly podcast, Investor Intelligence, available on all major streaming platforms.